Hi there, welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at growing food inside shipping containers. So I'm here inside our incubation room which is actually made from a 20 foot shipping container and it does a great job at keeping a stable temperature of around about 20 to 24 degrees Celsius to incubate our substrate in. And shipping containers have got lots of really great qualities that enable uh, controlled growing conditions for a whole range of crops. And we're going to dive into that in a bit more detail in just a moment. If you watched our video from last week, you'll know that we're currently in the process of scaling up our fresh mushroom production. And that part of that process is to convert the shipping container that's next door to me here back into a fruiting room. It was actually used as a fruiting room years ago when I first set the farm up around about a decade ago. And since it's been used for various other purposes, like a packing room, a storage space, and currently it's been in use as a fridge for the last couple of years. Um, so we're in the process of working out the design and how we're going to be turning it back into a fruiting room. And I thought it would be a nice opportunity to just make a video about how shipping containers can make great uh, rooms, basically to grow a whole range of different crops. So let's jump on the computer and look at this in a bit more detail. All right, so let's just start off by looking at a few examples of the sorts of container-based food growing systems that are already out there. A lot of it's been pioneered in the United States, although there's increasingly companies both in Europe and in Asia that are starting to pick up and run with the same idea. And that idea basically is to take usually a repurposed shipping container and to kit it out with a whole range of equipment that enables you to um, control the growing environment inside that container and then of on top of that, there's usually some form of shelving or vertical farming uh, where you can plant crops of various sorts into. So here's a few examples. Uh, this one is GrowPod Solutions. Um, they seem to specialise mainly in uh, leafy green production, um, which is a theme you'll see over and over again. Square Roots is uh, based in New York and they're dealing more with a vertical uh, cropping system, growing a lot of herbs and also flowers, I believe, as well, um, inside of their shipping containers. Grow box, grow a whole range of different crops. Usually these companies are kitting the containers out and then people are buying the containers off of them and running the farms. So they, these companies mainly are sort of manufacturing companies um, who are producing these ready to go systems. And um, it's not just leafy greens, you'll see there are some uh, strawberry farms popping up. There's one in France that grows strawberries like this all year round. You can grow a lot of strawberries in a shipping container and it's obviously a high value crop so that's something that works well. Um, you've got microgreens and there are various different production systems that people employ. For some it's completely soilless and it's happening either in um, like a water nutrient solution or in some cases it's aeroponics. And then there's some other really interesting designs which I, I like these where they integrate it into an urban area and they open the whole thing up so people can come along and just have a look at the, the thing in process. So some of them have got uh, windows retrofitted into them so you can go along and have a look at the produce growing right there in the middle of a city. There's some other really cool designs where the outside of the container has been decked out in wood um, and again these are in the middle of, uh, I think this may be in Paris, um, and the point here is you can, people can go in and have a look at where the produce is being grown and just connect with the whole process a little bit. And here's another one. Again, it's a vertical farming setup. So I think you get the idea. It's basically people growing food inside of these containers. And the container really is just being used to house the whole operation and create a space where the environment can be controlled and you can grow um, whatever crops you want to grow within that environment. So let's just go a step further and just have a look at some of the features that make shipping containers really good for food production. So one of the main advantages is that shipping containers are modular and they're portable and they're stackable. So it makes it really simple for you just to drop down one of these systems in the middle of almost anywhere. It could be the middle of a city, but it could also be a farm or a hard standing or an industrial area. Anywhere that you can put down a shipping container you can basically just drop down a farm and have it in operation within just a couple of weeks. And that makes it really easy for people who don't already have access to land. Um, and, and maybe that if you have to move it around or put it in a different spot. Um, but also the fact that they're stackable and the fact that they're modular means that you can 
add to your farm. You can start small and add to it slowly as time goes on if you want to. They're also really easily convertible. So if you think of a shipping container as a bit of a blank canvas, it's just a room and within that you can do whatever you want. So obviously they require um, all sorts of retrofitting depending on what you're going to grow inside but it's possible to drill into the containers and to fit up electrics inside um, and to basically install any equipment that you might need to as long as you have electricity supply nearby you can employ whatever equipment you need inside that container and you can treat it like you would any other room inside a building. On top of that you can cut uh, windows into the side of them, doors, you can separate different areas within the container into separate rooms. So they're really quite flexible in terms of um, how you can kit them out and turn them into something completely new. And because they're a self-contained unit and once you've kitted them out with the equipment inside, it is possible to completely automate the climate inside of there. And most of the con container farm companies who are um, selling these off-the-shelf containers they usually incorporate some kind of automated climate control which can be controlled by an app on a phone or, or a computer and it basically means that the people who are running these farms they don't need to be there every single day necessarily they can monitor it from afar and make adjustments from the phone which is a really nice feature and it's also quite important if you've got a load of produce grown in a small space like that that you have uh, some degree of control over it if you're not there all the time. Another major advantage to container-based food systems is that they are possible to grow food all year round. So if you're growing outside in the fields, you're obviously limited to certain growing seasons and that's not the case in a shipping container. Because you're controlling the environment, you can uh, get multiple crops per year. It depends a lot on what crop you're growing and uh, the system that you employ, but you can potentially be cropping food every single week of the year and that um, just enables you to have a constant production and supply of whatever you're growing. The other thing is that they produce a very high output per meter squared and this really has to do with the sorts of uh, growing systems that people are using whether it's vertical growing uh, also to do with the crops that they're growing that you can choose to grow crops that have a high yield per meter squared and so you don't need acres of shipping containers in order to grow a lot of food and so that makes it possible for fairly small farms to be able to set up in small spaces without needing um, a lot of land and that makes it possible for people to get into and start. And because of the way that the produce in a shipping container is grown in a controlled environment you tend to use a lot less water and nutrient input per meter squared or per kilo output of produce and that's because everything is so finely tuned you can deliver exactly the right amount of nutrient and water to the crop that you're growing at exactly the right time. So there's less wasted that there would be in a field based system where you get runoff and where it's hard to deliver exactly the right amount to each individual plant. So, so far we've seen a lot of leafy green based operations but that's not the only type of food you can grow in containers. You can pretty much grow anything and that tends to be leafy greens that people grow because they fetch a high price um, and you can grow a lot in a small space but you can also grow strawberries like we saw a minute ago um, and this picture you can see in front of you here is an insect farm they're growing various insects which are being turned into uh, different forms of protein rich snack based food and of course you can also grow mushrooms which we'll come and have a look at in a bit more detail in just a second now you might be thinking that all looks great but it also looks pretty expensive and you'd be right because those off-the-shelf pre-built shipping container farms start at around about $40,000 and they go up from there depending on the size of the unit and what equipment is inside of it so it's not a cheap way to get started but of course with all these sort of things you don't have to go about it like that you can do more of a DIY cheaper version of it and that's what we've done with our farm here. Um, so let's move on and have a little look at a bit more detail on how to grow mushrooms in shipping containers. So in many ways growing mushrooms in shipping containers is similar to growing other crops. You need to create the right environment inside. And the difference here is that the environment you're looking to create to grow mushrooms is different to that of plants. In particular you need a lot of humidity in order to grow mushrooms in the fruiting stage. And that's something that you would always be looking to avoid with most plants. Um, you also need to ensure that there is not too much CO2 in the room which will naturally build up from the substrate and the mushrooms fruiting and that's sort of opposite as well to when you're growing plants when uh, 
uh, adding CO2 into the space is actually beneficial. So let's move on and have a little look at what kind of conditions you need to create in a shipping container in order for it to work. So one thing to note is there's a few different stages to the process of producing mushrooms and you would tend to have a different shipping container for each stage. Uh, this photo here is from a company called Lifecycle in Australia. A number of years back we helped them as a consultant to set up their farm and we talked them through the process of what you need for each different space and how to convert a container for that. And you basically need a few different spots for each stage of the process, most of which can be done in a shipping container. So the first stage is probably something you'd look to do outside or in a covered area of some sort, and that's to prepare the substrate. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this here, but we'll cover it in other videos. There's lots of different ways of growing mushrooms, different types of substrate that you might be preparing. The way that we like to do it, we like to keep it low tech and low cost, and so we are soaking straw inside of a IBC unit, which is the, the white box you can see in this picture here, and we do it in a little undercovered area just next to the shipping container. So you can see that an area to produce your substrate for mushroom growing can be pretty simple. You just need a sheltered area, a workbench, and some kind of vessel to uh, hydrate and pasteurize your substrate in. So one nice solution that I've seen for this is these roof covers that can join between two shipping containers. We don't have enough space for this here, but if you were designing a mushroom farm in shipping containers from scratch, you might want to consider having a space between two containers and putting one of these roof covers over like that, and then you could create your pasteurization um, mixing space outside in between the two containers. When it comes to the second step, you're looking to mix and inoculate your substrate. Now you could actually do this stage outside, right next to where you're pasteurizing your substrate. And we're actually gonna trial doing that um, shortly as we rebuild our farm here. And there's a lot of advantages to that. It's less moving about of the substrate. Um, but if you do wanna do it inside in a, in a covered area, you can just do it in a shipping container or half a shipping container, depending on the size of it. All you really need is a workbench and a space in which to mix your substrate up and load it into bags or buckets, however you're gonna grow. So it's a fairly simple space and definitely something that you can do in a shipping container fairly easily. From there, once you've inoculated your bags, you need a, an incubation room. Again, this is a quite a simple space to create in a shipping container. You saw the one that I was in at the beginning of this video. It's basically just a room whereby you need to control the temperature is the main factor and CO2 to some degree, the room will fill up with CO2 naturally as the mushrooms begin to eat their way across the substrate. So you wanna have um, some form of ventilation in there just to flush out uh, that CO2 on a regular basis and bring in some fresh oxygen. And this is something that's fairly easy to do in a shipping container or any other room just through the use of simple fans. And you also want to have a space in which you can eliminate the light, which is obviously fairly easy to do in a container as well, as soon as the door is shut. So when it comes to the fruiting stage, this is the most complicated stage in which to control the environmental conditions for mushroom production. Um, you need to make sure you've got reasonably high humidity, 85% or above. Um, you need to be able to control CO2 levels so they don't rise too high. If they get too high, the mushrooms won't form properly, so you need regular fresh air exchange and ventilation, which can be achieved just through the use of fans inside the room. You need some light, uh, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Again, it can be fairly easily done with the timer and some waterproof lighting. And some people may also wish to control the temperature in the fruit room as well. That's something that we don't actually do. We are lucky enough to live in a temperate area of the world where the temperature never gets, uh, well, rarely gets below uh, freezing and it rarely goes above 25 degrees Celsius. So most of the year round we're able to grow mushrooms without having to heat or cool our fruiting room. However, if you're in a hotter or colder part of the world, you may find that you need to look into temperature control, um, either cooling it when it gets too hot or warming it up when it's too cold, or potentially just deciding to grow at certain times of the year when the ambient can conditions outside match those of the range in which most mushrooms grow, which is usually between around about uh, 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius is kind of the optimum range. Anyway, the point here is that all of these conditions can be fairly easily created in any sort of space, whether it's an indoor room 
or a shipping container. And once you've created those conditions inside the room, you've got yourself a production space ready to go and it can be moved around, it can be dropped down somewhere else, it can be sent to somebody on the other side of the country. You've got a highly productive, climate controlled, mobile food production unit. So as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about growing food and shipping containers in general, and in particular to be kitting out this old shipping container behind me and turning it back into a productive fruiting room. We're gonna be painting it, emptying everything that's in there out, and then kitting it out with all the equipment we need in order to fruit the mushrooms in it. And we'll be following that process over the coming weeks on the channel and inside our course in a bit more detail. So I hope you found this video interesting and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.